Hi, I'm Bob Miller, Color Services Manager here at IT Supplies. And joining me today is Jason Tempestini of Rods and Cones. Today, we wanted to take a moment to discuss how automating your printing process can help your business increase profits and productivity. Jason, welcome. Thanks, Bob. Nice to be here. Yeah, we're really happy you could join us today. You've You've you come here. We've known each other for a little while, and uh, I know a you a little while, yeah. And and you have a little bit of experience in the print market. Um, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and uh, what you've been up to. Thanks. So uh, I came back. To, I came to printing uh, way back in 1990. Um, I was working for a small printer in uh, in Northern California. Uh, who weirdly, I know it'll sound strange, but as a small printer, they went out of business, um, which never happens to small printers. Um, but I went to work for our service bureau because back in those days, you may recall, we had service bureaus, um, and they put me to work on a stripping table for six months. While the goal there, because I had a you know I had a year and a half of Mac experience, so I was like one of the major Mac heads in the area at that point. Um, and they wanted to start doing DTP, whatever that meant, right? They wanted to bring their prepress over to the Mac side. Um, yeah. but when I got there, they weren't quite ready and it took them about six months, uh, to actually start implementing Mac based prepress, which was great experience for me. I got to start on a stripping table, uh, doing, you know, booking film and making plates and making proofs, all the stuff that I later found super important to how I did electronic prepress, right? I got to learn to do it the, the way it had always been done. Um, and I worked there for a while. I, uh, I, I sold some Cytex equipment for a while. I, I trained a couple of organizations on pre-press and, and did some consulting work throughout the Midwest for a couple of years there. Um, and then in 1997, I ended up out in Dublin, California, in Northern California still, and uh, started running a pre-press department out there in Dublin. Um, and I was there until August of last year. Um, so in 25 years with that company, uh, I ran pre-press, I ran operations, I started running their IT department, I started overseeing product development for them. Um, and along the way, in the early 2000s, we first started working with rods and cones to do color calibration. The first thing we were trying to do, you know, back in the day, we were trying to fingerprint our irises, our iris proofers, to get them to more closely match the 150 line screen work we were doing on our four color process presses, right? Um, and that evolved. I kept up with the relationship with rods and cones for many years and evolved through several iterations. Um, uh, we, uh, my shop hosted the very first West coast, uh, Grackle seven training seminars. Um, we were the, one of the first presses on the West coast certified for Grackle seven, um, and stayed that way for many years. Um, and then after that transition, we started getting into automation because I had some specific projects that I needed to take on some opportunities that we had as a printer that we just couldn't do manually. Um, right. And we'll talk a little bit about some of those projects as we go along. But I started working with Focus Switch with rods and cones. Um, and it was a perfect mix for me. Um, I had started out doing FileMaker development, moved into doing you know website development, things like that to provide some automation and some tools for the, for the shop. And Switch was just a perfect add on to that. In August of last year, when the, when the printing shop I was at forever started wrapping up his business where they were headed to close their doors, I reached out to rods and cones and, uh, and, uh, became a partner with the agency. And I've been working. Now I get to take this knowledge that I picked up in the printing industry and help out a bunch of other printers with it. I've really been having a good time doing it. That's awesome. So, I mean, really you have a unique perspective. I mean, you've, you've been, you know, hands on in the print industry and now you're helping to program automation that helps the printing industry. I mean, that's a, you know, you have that unique understanding that a lot of people in software development don't. So that's, that I think is one of the things that really brought us together. And one of the reasons mm -hmm. why, you know, IT supplies wanted to partner with someone, uh, a company like yours. So let's talk a little bit about automation. You know, there are a lot of people out there who don't understand how automation can benefit their business. I mean, specifically, you know, all the tools and applications that can be automated to help improve workflows at a particular company. So perhaps you can give us some examples of how automation has helped customers that you've worked with. Right. So 
when I talk about automation, mostly my focus is on in focus switch. Um, it's just the automation platform we've used. There's a few automation platforms out there, but I think switch gives us the most flexibility because in the end, an automation platform is just a glue platform, right? We're, we're connecting together applications that already exist and trying to make clean workflows out of them that do predictable things and switch is excellent at this. So, you know, when I think about all the stages of pieces that we've connected with sort of from the beginning to the end of the process, um, I've worked on switch implementations with web front end systems where we're working on connecting up with your e-commerce system and being able to consume the jobs that come out of there, connecting directly with MIS systems, whatever you're using, you know, if you're using pace or whatever you're using to manage your shop infrastructure, I've been able to set up connections with switch to be able to get the metadata out that you need so that switch can make appropriate decisions about work. Right. And then, Moving on from there, you know, you, now you've got a file and you know what your intention is to do with it. So working on pre-flight connections so we can do appropriate pre-flight and as much automated fixing as is possible to do um, with, with, you know, without getting an operator involved and, and to have systems that can intelligently split out the jobs that need to have an operator involved because no big surprise to you, Bob, but that continues to happen. Yep. Right there, the the this system does not replace prepress operators in any way. It just gets rid of the garbage they don't want to deal with, or at least as an operator myself, and then later as a manager of operators, that's what I did with it. It's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to grind that wheel four thousand times a day. I can just have this system grind the wheel, and and it works out a lot better for me. Um, so pre-flight and automated fixing. Going on to proofing, whether that be as simple as like, hey, let's make a, a low resolution version of the PDF and email it off to the customer because I got that email address from the MIS system way back upstream or complicated integrated proofing systems where I send a, an invite to a customer to join a, a proofing session via an online tool and be able to collaboratively go through a proof. All of that's available. And then when we get approval, now, now we're talking about knowing what the resources of the shop are. So um, handling full imposition where we can, again, point this information from the MIS system. We know the sheet size it's going to go on. We know the imposition style that's going to be used. So we can do the imposition correctly based on templates for you know 80% of the work. And then in digital workflows, if we're going out to the Lambda or we're going out via a Fiery front end or we're going out via an Iris front end, switch can directly control those front ends so that my operators that are standing there in, in, in our shop, we had two uh, Rico presses back to back, both running fiery and the operator literally flipped back and forth between them to keep them both going as much as possible. What we were able to do is insert into the job queue, final PDFs fully imposed with the queue selected correctly and the quantity already set. So they were just bringing up jobs, double checking to make sure the information was still the same. And suddenly, you know, somebody hadn't taken a Sharpie and gone, no, no, we want a hundred. These things happen, right? Um, but double checking that and then pressing go so that they were ready to go. Um, so switch can kind of take the whole piece soup to nuts. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to oversimplify it, but I mean, in my mind, I kind of look at it like the Apple store or, you know, with different apps. So like for your iPhone, you have that app store, you know, where you can download different mm -hmm. apps. Well, I mean, Switch has a similar thing. So you have different applications that you can incorporate. I know Onyx has their application now on the Switch platform. Um, yeah. We've talked about uh, people who want to automate uh, very customized uh, cut functions and stuff. So, you know, traces and, and cuts that, that aren't simple and therefore aren't just in a basic package. Um, mm -hmm. But with the ability of, to, to access these different applications and stuff, we're able to build something out that maybe doesn't even exist in one piece of software. Right. Yeah. Right. And we have the ability as uh, you know, both on my end, I've done some some modest customization work directly um, to to help create some of those complicated workflows. And we work with a network of people that have done even the craziest of of, of things with automation. So we have the resources to to resolve the problem. Right? You lay out a problem in a workflow, and I'm not sure if this piece will fit, or I'm not sure if that piece will fit. But we, as a general rule, we can we can put all those pieces together and make solutions that'll work for you. 
What I really like about Switch is that you can start just with a simple problem and fix a simple problem and take care of 60% of the problems and then add a little complication that takes care of another 20% of the problems and, and, and continue to build incrementally. I think that's the point I was about to make, which is, I mean, you know, I've been on these calls with you and, and as we go over things with customers, I mean, we don't want to intimidate anyone who's watching. You know, you don't have to start with everything solved. The point is these are building blocks. So we can start, mm -hmm. uh, we can start with some very simple automations that help your business save some time, save some money. And, and we can build on it from there. We don't have to go, you know, build everything out that you desire right away. So let's, you know, we can, we, we can come up with a plan. We can make sure that we don't have to go backwards in the future. We just want to make sure that we use the right building blocks so that each step of the way you're getting more and more accomplished. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So I know we've worked on a few projects together. Uh, one in particular stands out, um, and uh, I, it's, a, it's a yearbook situation. Uh, can you tell me more about our implementation of Switch that we use to help that customer? Well, and it actually starts, Bob, with the, one of the simplest pieces. You talked about being able to put together simple building blocks, and pre-flight is probably one of the core pieces there. Yeah. So... What these folks were doing was they were having, you know, they're getting, you can imagine you're in the yearbook business, the, your, your content creators aren't exactly highly trained designers. So you're getting PDF files that have been put together every which way from every possible imaginable source of photos and text and everything else. Um, and they were having to go through and hand process these files, make sure that all the images were properly set up, make sure the whole thing flowed through and the bleeds were right and the page sizes all stayed the same, all that kind of Thing that we've all done working with customer files before. Um, what we were able to implement right up front was some pretty basic pre-flight decision making where it's like, okay, pick the press that this job is going to go to. And it really only amounts to like three different possibilities for setups. And then dump the files through it and it's handling the pre-flight automatically. All the colors are going to be normalized. All the page sizes are going to be normalized. All the bleeds are taken care of. And then when it runs into trouble, it just tosses them off into a folder where their pre-press team can go through the trouble files one at a time while everything else just continues to move on down the road. And of course, you know, the next simple step for them after we've got cleared jobs was to kick out low resolution PDFs that literally in their case, just get emailed back to the customer. Yep. So the job just hangs out and waits. The low res, P low, low res PDF is already out but you're not chasing a team of operators saying, hey, did you remember to check all the bleeds on that? Or did you, you know, I think I missed an image on page 16. The system doesn't miss any of those things. Um, and everything proceeds a little more predictably. Yes, yes. And no, I mean, they... That customer was amazed, uh, obviously, when we had this discussion, because I think there's a lot of businesses out there that don't realize what automation can bring to the table. And, and as you said, you know, yeah, it may not replace somebody, but in this day and age where it is very hard to find, uh, people, uh, to fill positions and stuff, it is, it is something that certainly, if you have somebody good, you don't want them wasting their time on some of these things. If you can automate a process and, uh, and, and just have it, you know, like you said, it, it's not going to miss anything. It's going to capture everything. And it allows the person to be able to focus on other in things that are more important, you know, that, that really are critical for the final piece of production. So I think, uh, I think that's, uh, I think that's huge. And certainly that customer felt that way because they went right mm -hmm. ahead and, and moved forward very quickly, uh, before they got into their busy season. So I know there's a lot of other customers that we've worked with or, and that are out there. So, um, I think, though, that really, you know, this is this has been very informative. Um, I don't want to extend the time too long because I know people have other things that they need to be doing. But, uh, Jason, you know, do you have any closing thoughts as we come to an end on this podcast? Yeah, the I can't emphasize enough the idea that that switch isn't here to replace pre press employees. 
But also with as much time as I spent running a printing company and being responsible for the bottom line of a printing company, what I do know it's going to do is keep us from having to hire that next pre-press employee. Um, those people are very, very difficult to find, as you well know, and costly. Um, so the ability to allow expansion without bringing in more staff can be frankly amazing. And what I dig about switches, it doesn't really, it's not the process of going, oh, I've got this halo customer. I want to start doing advertising for Porsche. And to do that, I have to set up all this complicated automation. It's like, nah, we're just going to go ahead and take the simple stuff out of the way and let your pre-experienced people focus on the, on the difficult stuff. And it's going to gain you the same benefit in the end. Yep. No, I, I agree a hundred percent. And, you know, we've seen it time and time again, and we talk to customers. In fact, I, I know you're engaging with a couple of other customers of ours that are, are looking at this. And I think everybody is really starting to embrace automation and it's, it's where things are going because there are a lot of repetitive things that people do on a daily basis that, that if it can be automated, it just, it, it's, it just makes your life so much easier. So, so I really do appreciate you taking the time today, Jason, joining me on this podcast. Um, you guys have been a great partner at Rods and Cones, and we're looking forward to a great partnership going forward in 2024 and beyond. So um, thanks again. And uh, really, to everyone out there, we hope that you've enjoyed this podcast. And, and certainly, feel free to comment and contact us if you have any questions at all, you can reach out to IT Supplies uh, through itsupplies.com. You can call our 800 number, um, email us, um, just ask for color services if you have some specific questions, and we'll be more than happy to help you. Yeah, thanks, Bob. I really appreciate it. It's been great working with you guys over the course of this last year, and, and uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about the Switch. It's something I get really excited about. So do we. All right. Thanks, Jason. Take care and have a wonderful time.